Whether it's something kept hidden out of shame or something you're privately proud of, everyone has a secret they can never make public. Fortunately, thanks to internet anonymity, we can get our secrets off our chest to online strangers without anyone we know finding out. From utterly shameful confessions to truly bizarre attractions, here are some of the most astonishing secrets internet users are taking to the grave. Oh mother. The social media site Reddit is full of bizarre confessions made from behind the safety of anonymous usernames. Users share their confessions and ask Reddit threads with titles like, what secret are you taking to the grave? Usually posting under single use throwaway accounts and the stories are spectacular. Now whatever weird things you get up to behind closed doors without breaking the law is none of my business. But that doesn't mean it's going to sound good when you post it online, like this admission from Reddit user Chill Kyle. One evening during his freshman year of college, Chill Kyle and his stepmom had a little too much to drink. And after an emotional chat, they did the unthinkable. They ended up making out. If you're feeling a shudder down your spine, don't worry. That's a normal response, but it gets worse. After they'd been drunkenly playing tonsil tennis for 10 minutes, Chill Kyle's dad suddenly walked in on them. Luckily, they broke it off right before his dad actually saw anything, but the pair were left with a lifelong secret neither could ever discuss. What's even more twisted is that this was the first time Chill Kyle had ever kissed someone. This Redditor's therapist is certainly going to have their work cut out when they try to tackle this one. Toad in the Hole Speaking of therapy, this next user, who since deleted their account, admitted that when they told this story to their therapist, they burst out laughing. If that doesn't set the bar for your expectations, I don't know what will. One day when the Redditor was just 13 years old, they were on their way to a grocery store with some friends when they spotted a tiny frog on the sidewalk. Without telling anyone, they decided to pick the frog up and take it with them to the store. Whether they got tired of holding the frog or simply didn't have enough hands to grab snacks is unclear, but what they did next was hilarious. They wandered over to the store salad bar, placed the frog right in the middle of the lettuce tray, and walked off. The Redditor didn't know exactly why they did it, but they're still terrified that their act of whimsy might have given some old lady looking for lettuce a heart attack, although I wouldn't leap to conclusions. Mommy Issues Moms are superheroes in their own rights, but it turns out they can just as easily become secretly vengeful vigilantes. Don't believe me? Well, Redditor poor elated throwaway story might just change your mind. When they were about five years old, this Redditor's mom went to visit a friend who also had children of her own. One of the kids, a young girl, had the bedroom all little girls dream of. It was painted bright pink, had a big canopy bed, and an abundance of brand new toys. While she was clearly doted on by her mother, her brother was not so lucky. His bare room only had a cage-like cot in it, which he was barbarically forced to stay in. This callous favoritism didn't sit right with poor elated throwaway's mom, and she hatched a stinker of a plan to make her feelings known. One day as the two of them were driving to the park, she pulled out a bag with something suspiciously brown and sticky coating the inside. It looked a little bit like melted chocolate, but the smell was unmistakably that of something more, er, organic. Before the young Redditor could ask what she was doing, she pulled into a parking lot where her friend's car was parked. Without a word, she got out and began smearing that stinking, sticky brown substance all over the windshield. When she was happy with her disgusting display, she simply got back in the car and drove off like nothing happened. Having witnessed an event that made her mother look like a criminal, or at the very least insane, this Redditor decided to keep the entire ordeal to themselves. But as mad as she sounds, you can't deny that it's a hilarious way of telling someone they're a crappy parent. Hurt Locker A lot of the secrets in these online confession threads are cringy or funny, but then there are some that just make you feel bad for laughing. Like this admission from a now understandably deleted Reddit account. 
When this user was in the seventh grade, one of their fellow school kids had a faulty locker. No matter what combination you put in, this kid's locker would always open. Now it's unclear why the user decided on their next move, but they stuffed a handful of mini liquor bottles into the faulty locker just before an inspection. Maybe they thought it'd be funny if the other kid got a month of detention, or perhaps it was payback for something that had happened in the schoolyard. Whatever the reason, when the school's administration found the liquor, they went in hard and the framed student was immediately expelled. Despite it being the Redditor's fault, they never had the courage to confess and the framed kid was forced to attend a remedial school to get a basic education. Having carried out a prank that might have irreversibly changed another kid's life, it's not surprising this Redditor kept this confession online only. In fact, with all that guilt to deal with, I wouldn't be surprised if this Redditor's became even more familiar with little bottles of liquor as an adult. Big ones too, probably. While they may be hitting the bottle, why don't you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Instead of a hideous hangover, you'll be rewarded with brand new videos that I put out every single day. And you can still operate heavy machinery. What a bonus. Now let's dive back into even more hilarious confessions that really should have stayed secret. Hornet Horror Sometimes the dumb things you do when you're a kid can haunt you well into your adult years. Something that Reddit user Butterbean6 knows all too well. At the age of 12, this guy confessed that he used to be a painfully shy preteen. And like in all cases of childhood introversion, his family decided the best thing for him was to attend a summer camp. Oh, just how wrong they were going to be. One day after camp activities had finished, he found himself wandering alone next to a large field where the other kids were playing. He was jealously watching them throw frisbees and catch pigskins with each other when something in a nearby tree caught his eye. It was a giant hornet's nest, at least the size of a watermelon, if not bigger. Curious and clearly a little bit sadistic, Butterbean Six grabbed a rock and hurled it at the nest, tearing a huge chunk out of the buzzing bomb. Obviously, a huge amount of very angry hornets started to swarm and Butterbean Six bolted away from the scene of the crime. He managed to escape without a single sting, but the other kids weren't so lucky. Two of them ended up so badly stung by the sudden swarm that they had to go to the hospital. Even though the guilt racked Butterbean Six's tiny conscience, he never owned up to knocking the nest. Apparently, he still carries that guilt around with him to this day, and he's about 40. Well, for his sake, let's all hope hornets never discover how to use anonymous message threads, or this guy will be in for a world of hurt. The Original Grandparent It takes a strong will to be buried with a lifelong secret, and Reddit user Dr. Seuss found this out firsthand after his grandmother passed away. When the Redditor's family was cleaning out his grandma's possessions, they stumbled across some hidden documents that threw their family's history into question. The Redditor had always known their family tree had a few strange branches. For a start, Dr. Seuss's aunt was born in 1945 but his grandfather had been away fighting in World War II from 1942 till 1945. So unless he'd miraculously teleported back home for one night of fun in 1944, it didn't seem possible that the aunt and grandfather were related by blood. But the documents Dr. Seuss found more than confirmed the family's previous suspicions. They revealed that the grandmother had in fact been married and had a child before meeting Dr. Sue's grandfather. The grandfather had adopted the grandmother's first child, the Redditor's aunt, when they met, but neither of them ever told a soul while they were alive. And to think, most people would probably struggle to keep a surprise birthday party secret, let alone an entire marriage. Blame it on the dog. Man's best friend often takes the blame for some very bad smelling human behavior. But one, now understandably deleted Reddit user managed to successfully blame the dog for much more than bad gas. When this user was in their freshman year of college, he'd partied a little too hard one Friday before returning to his parents' home for the weekend. With a pounding head and a gurgling stomach, he put on some comfy shorts and decided to recuperate by watching TV in the family living room. Trying to quell the queasiness, he started rocking back and forth on the floor when he suddenly let one rip only and wasn't a fart he'd been holding in. Instead of a bad stench, a big brown streak was now strewn across the carpet. Mortified, he scrambled to the bathroom to salvage what remained of his dignity. But when he finally returned to the living room to confront his crime, he found his father on his hands and knees cleaning it all up. The Redditor braced himself for the lecture of a lifetime, but instead the old man was yelling profusely at the family dog. 
Poor Fido got the brunt of the blame, and this squirting storyteller was too ashamed to ever reveal the truth. I'm not sure who's more of a dog in this confession, Fido or the freshman. Chewing the Cud When scrolling through confessional online threads of these kinds, you'll occasionally come across something truly gross that makes you throw up in your mouth a little. In the unfortunate instance something like that happens, most people would go to the restroom or even ugh, swallow it back down. But one Reddit user admitted that they prefer to chew the action over. Literally. Under the account name Throwaway1423344, this user described their own sick habit of routinely intentionally regurgitating bits of food back into their mouth, then rechewing and swallowing it. This grim bodily function is usually observed in animals like cows, where the chewing of regurgitated food is required as part of their digestive process. Humans, of course, do not need to do this. But regardless, the Redditor reported that they've been able to bring up food back into their mouth for as long as they can remember. They've even figured out which foods bring up stomach acids when regurgitated and avoid them so that they don't damage their teeth. Seriously? What's wrong with a piece of gum? Medical Mayhem While you can't help but laugh at a lot of confessions in these online threads, there are others that you wish you'd never read. Like this next one from Reddit user Medicus Queen Dam Arca. Around 10 years ago, this Redditor claimed they were part of a secret group that would take medical college admission tests on behalf of wannabe medical students. The scandalous cheat ring allowed unqualified students to score top places in some of the best medical schools in the world, but not for free, obviously. Their fee was a staggering $100,000, plus any extras needed to cheat the registration system. This included fake IDs, fingerprints, and even prosthetics. You could say their methods were downright clinical. While this may leave some people feeling a little uncomfortable, Medicus Quedum Arca slept easy. After all, they reasoned that if these rich kids couldn't even pass an entrance exam, how on earth would they pass their grueling tests waiting for them in med school? Convinced they'd probably all drop out, this Redditor had no qualms with what they were doing. That was until one of their previous clients really screwed up. Having miraculously completed med school, they'd racked up several shocking malpractice suits. Fortunately, it was nothing too serious, but it was more of a wake-up call for the Redditor than a shot of adrenaline to the heart. Feeling rightfully ashamed of the countless lives they were endangering, the Redditor dropped out of the money-making club. The group disbanded shortly after, but they never revealed their client list. And with that, I don't know if I'll ever be going to the doctors ever again. Breaking Mad for anyone with criminal dreams of living the big money Breaking Bad fantasy lifestyle, instead of actually pursuing it, why not stay safe and listen to this confession instead? Reddit user Grave9876543211 sets the scene at the customer service desk of a Texan shipping company he once worked at. One day, a fellow the Redditor instantly recognized as a local dealer of certain illegal pharmaceuticals came in and asked to have a package shipped. The package in question was oddly wrapped up with duct tape, so it was clear there was something inside the dealer definitely didn't want the rest of the world to see. Doing their job, the Redditor took the package and placed it in the delivery area out back. And the story should have ended there. But in reality, being overwhelmed by curiosity, the suspicious looking package ended up in the Redditor's backpack. Once their shift ended and the coast was clear, they ripped open the duct tape to find a huge amount of cold hard cash nestled inside. $37,890 to be precise. If their confession is to be believed, the user left Texas the following month with the money in hand and never returned. Even though the Redditor technically took money away from the illicit drug trade, I think even Pablo Escobar would be proud of that move. Firestarter there's nothing worse than having a burning secret you can't tell anyone, and no one knows that better than Redditor Sask. They'd been living with one hot secret since they were a kid, but in the safe space of the online thread, they finally felt like they could extinguish their guilt. When they were just nine years old, Sask found a box of matches inside their dad's truck. Like any inquisitive and mildly sadistic kid, Sask wanted to see if he could light one. So they hopped out and headed into a nearby field which was full of very dry and very flammable weed. Clearly not the brightest bulb in the box, Sask thought this was the perfect place to try lighting a match. And while his stubby little fingers finally got one to light, it burned him and he thoughtlessly flicked it away. Like a spark in a tinderbox, it only took a matter of seconds for all the weed around him to suddenly burst into flames. 
Roaring fire spread quickly and ravaged the crops, and while Sosk managed to escape, the blaze ended up engulfing a whopping 10 acres of land. The fire department eventually deduced that this wasn't an accident, and all eyes turned to Sosk for an explanation. Even though it was his dumb actions that started this fiery saga, he was smart enough to lie and pointed the finger at a neighborhood friend. Did I say friend? Sorry, I meant scapegoat. The boy was known to be a troublemaker, and the blatantly biased authorities had no problem believing he was to blame. Thanks to Sosk's arsonist itch and lack of conscience, the boy was sent away, and they never heard from him again. That confession may have been red hot, but keeping this a secret for so long is a nice cold move. Dumpster Damage do you ever see a car idiotically parked somewhere it shouldn't be and secretly hope that a little karma gets driven in their direction? If the answer is yes, then you'll love the little accident Redditor Quiddity99 had just over five years ago. During their shift at a convenience store, Quiddity99 was tasked with hauling one of the store's huge dumpsters out back. It was a massive metal bin, full to the brim with all kinds of waste. Fortunately, it had wheels, but Quiddity99 still had to use all their strength to push it into place. However, they hadn't noticed a small slope leading to the designated dumpster area, which caused the gigantic metal bin to suddenly pick up speed. And like that wasn't bad enough, it was at this exact point they saw an expensive looking convertible moronically parked in the designated dumpster spot. They tried to slow the dumpster down, but the inertia was too strong. Out of all other options, Quiddity99 put their body on the line and frantically forced themselves between the car and dumpster, but it was too heavy. With no one around to help or judge, they squirmed out of the way as hundreds of pounds of metal and garbage destroyed the convertible's door. Considering the dumpster was technically where it was meant to be, Quiddity99 quickly returned to work and pretended like nothing had happened. Although the secret sharing Redditor clearly felt bad, I think a lot of the blame rests squarely with that poorly parked pinhead. Do you think they got what they deserved? Let me know in the comments. Burning Friendship How far would you go for your best friend? Would you do anything for them? If your answer is yes, you might be on the same level as the band 65 According to this Reddit user, his best friend owned a restaurant that was on the cusp of becoming really successful. But a spanner was thrown in the works when the band 65 found out his crazy uncle had hatched a plot to murder his sworn enemy there. Apparently, the uncle's enemy felt safe in the restaurant and wouldn't have his guard up, which sounds like a plan plucked straight out of the Godfather movie. The band 65 tried to persuade his uncle not to do it, or at the very least, not in the restaurant. But when the uncle wouldn't change it, his mind, the band 65 took matters into his own hands and decided to save his friend's restaurant's reputation. Not by going to the police, that'd have been too simple. Instead, he burned the restaurant to the ground. Figuring his best friend would get the insurance money and start a new restaurant, he destroyed the thing his friend had poured his life into. Although the Redditor admitted he was once confronted on the matter by his best friend, he denied any involvement and the secret remained buried in the restaurant's ashes. There's definitely a lesson here. When the only solutions to your problems are burning down buildings, it might be time to reassess who you're spending your time with. Hamster Airlines Everyone makes stupid mistakes when they're kids, but being able to keep one covered up up until adulthood like Redditor Infected Leg 253, that takes skill or psychopathy, or both. When they were about eight years old, Infected Leg was over at a friend's house playing with their pet hamster. When the friend went to the restroom, Infected Leg thought it would be fun to take the hamster on the flight of a lifetime. Infected Leg grabbed the hamster and flew it around the room, spinning really fast and gripping it harder than intended while doing so. But the flight turned out to be too fast and too furious because, whether through shock, stress, or a fatal fear of flying, the hamster died in the Redditor's hands. Panicked, they threw the hamster into its water bowl and told the friend the creature must have accidentally drowned. The friend never found out and infected leg never fessed up. But after doing something like that, I'd half expect the Redditor to receive annual visits from the ghost of hamsters past. Double Digits When looking for love, we all have our preferences. But while some people like a nice smile or beautiful eyes, 
not everyone's physical preferences are the same. Just ask Reddit user You Can Throw Your Own Way. In a much shorter admission than most, You Can Throw Your Own Way revealed that they weren't interested in the usual blonde or brunette debate. They're just really attracted to girls with polydactyly. For those who don't speak science, that's a special condition where people are born with extra fingers and toes on their hands or feet. While I can't say I share their taste, I suppose there are some practical applications to this kind of attraction. At the very least, the back rubs would be amazing. Flower Pot Fumble Sometimes when nature calls, there's no other option but to answer. One Reddit user whose account has since been deleted knows this all too well. And their confession is such a stinker, you might want to grab a peg. The Redditor claims he once worked for a landscaping company, planting flowers and taking care of gardens. But one day while he was working in a client's garden, he felt the urgent need to take a number two. Unable to hold it in, and apparently too proud or too flustered to ask to use a restroom, he chose a flower pot to, uh, fertilize. After checking that the coast was clear, he led rip. After five minutes of straining and squatting, the pooping protagonist realized he needed to hide the evidence. So he dug a hole and buried the flower pot in the client's garden, assuming nature would take care of the rest. But only after he'd finished did he notice something that would scar him for life. The entire family he was working for were standing on their balcony, mouths open in horror, having watched everything that just happened. As the gravity of the situation set in, the troubled turd tamer fled the sight in shame, albeit feeling a little lighter. He quit the job, but never told his boss the real reason why, which is understandable. And that, my friends, is how not to bury a secret. Which of these crazy confessions do you think should have stayed a secret? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any anonymous confessions of your own that you think could rival these clowns, get in touch with us at secrets at Thanks for watching.